Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you're with us uh, wherever you're joining us. If you're here in the Santa Barbara area watching us on television at TVSB, we welcome you. We're actually a uh, rare opportunity today to be in the TVSB studios and so grateful to be here and so grateful for this amazing team. And, and so many of you watch us all over the world and goodlifetelevision.org and the YouTube channel and the, all the different platforms. And then there's the podcast, which we have seen grow and we're excited about that. So any podcast platform, you can search for Good Life Conversations um, and you can find all the, all the interviews. So if you're a podcast person, you can do that. And we're just grateful, uh, grateful for you, uh, grateful for the good things. And you know, it's true that we get to choose what we dwell on and choose what we think about. And so uh, we hope that Good Life gives you an opportunity to think about good stuff and hear great stories. None of them are perfect. Uh, so that's, so if you're not perfect, then you're in good company. Uh, none of them are perfect. The stories aren't perfect, but there's so much goodness. And so we're, we're just happy to be here, happy you're with us. If you're not in the Christmas spirit, then you will be after this program. Let's just put it that way. I've, I've got some wonderful guests today. We're talking about a wonderful new movie. Uh, some of you will remember Ariel Fernald who's with us. She's been here before and her husband Trey. Welcome. It's great to be it here. It is so great to be yeah. here, Love especially it. talking about Christmas. Yes. <laughs> so that's the thing. There's Christmas. So like I just, you know, for me Christmas season starts the day after Halloween and people like if you don't you should think about it. If you think Christmas starts after Thanksgiving, I would encourage you to reevaluate because you're shortening. <laughs> Absolutely. You're yeah. shortening the season. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. do that? Yeah. So yeah. you might be watching this episode in July. That's great. Get, <laughs> this will be. You might be 107 in Fresno, and you're watching this, and just get in the Christmas spirit now. It's never too early. Yeah. Well, Christmas in July is a thing. That's true. Yeah. It is a thing. That's yeah. true. That's true. So let's start with you guys real quick, just because I love your story. You have 27, 24, 19 year old children in yes. Southern California. Mm -hmm. And Trey, you pastored for 22 years. 22 years, yeah. Because I firmly believe that's one of the hardest jobs in the world. And being a pastor's son and grandson, I have some experience with it, yeah. but I haven't done it myself. Can you tell us what, what was it like for you? And I'm not trying to beat up the job, but I'm saying it's hard in my experience. What was your yeah. experience? It's people one-on-one. If you don't love people, it's the wrong thing to be in, yeah. you know, but uh, I love people. And uh, even through the difficult challenges with people, right. we learn and grow, you know, we grow up. Uh, I, so many times when the, I man, had to manage a difficult person, I, I'm the one who grew up. Yeah. And then there's those times when people rally together and build something together in a church setting or for an outreach. And I just love that as well. Yes. So it was a, it was a wonderful time. And uh, it's been a great season that we're in now, though. Uh, we're on uh, beyond pastoring now. Yeah. And producing together and writing together. Right. So How fun. it's been a blessing. Well, that's a, what a wonderful perspective you just gave. God, why do I have to deal with this difficult person so that you can grow up? <laughs> yeah, that's actually yes. It's not it a bad. Happened thing. several times. That's a yeah. very good thought. Yeah, because there's, there's. The, I'm sure you see. I mean, it's like the police. I mean, people don't tend to call their pastor on their best day. <laughs> very know, true. You know, yeah. like very the true. police don't get called to say we're having a potluck. You know, everything's <laughs> going well. Like, yeah. They call you on your. And so that's kind of the pastoral thing is dealing with the real. Anyway, I could talk about that all day. That's a separate program, but uh, it's but, true. Yeah, but, but so talk a little bit about before we get to the, this movie that we're about to talk about. Um, talk about this journey you're now on, the producing the because you guys are down in the thick of it in Southern California. The this is the the capital of the world in terms of what's being put out on these airwaves that are so powerful, um, and what the, the, I have a whole speech I could give on that, which I won't give. But it's, a, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Oh, it's a tremendous opportunity. And I think that there's um, several people in different parts of the country that would challenge whether we are still in the, air, in the capital of filmmaking because it really has grown yeah. into moving into different states around the country. Um, Texas, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, um, Kentucky. These are just a few of the um, the states, including Oklahoma, yep. that have really, really, really stepped up their game 
and are taking a big chunk of the filmmaking uh, that's happening. I've heard that so, like George, they're doing major financial yes. incentives for. Oh, they are absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the last things that we've been filming, we've been we've filmed in Texas, not even right? right here, because the incentives, because of uh, so many different reasons. Yeah. Uh, but it just it just makes sense. It just makes sense. But of course, we are in California. You know, this is where our family is, and there is still so much that's happening here. Yeah. Um, and it is an incredible uh, time and an incredible opportunity. It's really an extension of the ministry that God's given us all these years, which is using the arts yeah. for His glory. Right. And it's an opportunity for us to use the arts, whether it's on stage or television or film, yeah. to share stories that are going to touch the hearts of people yeah. and share the gospel with them and disciple them. It's, it's so different than sitting in a pew or on a chair right. and hearing a speaker. Right. You know, th there's a moment there where people are just engaged in the life of that story. Yeah. And they can, in the quiet within themselves, connect their lives to it. Yes. And so if we can find those moments where we make them laugh and cry and feel and take them on that journey, yeah. um, it's amazing what God can do in those That's moments. so true. Jesus told stories. Yeah, Matthew 13, 34 says that Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables and without a parable, he didn't speak to them. And so Isn't that, that it, something? It, it's a weapon for a, a heart opening to yeah. receive good news. Right. Yeah. I don't remember um, tons of sermons mm -hmm. in terms of like the three bullet points, uh -huh. right? But I remember the stories. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You yeah. know, everybody remembers the stories. Yes. So that's what you're doing. You're telling stories. We're telling those stories. And I think it's so, um, it's such a beautiful opportunity for us to tell all kinds of stories. Yeah. You know, I think for a long time, particularly in faith film, we limited the type of stories that we were telling, um, the kinds of characters that we explored. And um, even some of the genres, you know, that we would jump into. And I think this is the time that God is really saying, no, we need to really open it up. Right. You know, we need to expand our tents. Right. And that's what I'm excited about is um, being able to jump into realms where there's not a whole lot like comedy. You know, right. there is not a lot of comedy out there uh, in the faith and family area. That's and man, do we need to laugh, to laugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? More than ever. You think? Yeah. Yeah, well, we yeah. think of the, the scriptures. I'm bringing Jay Leno to our big event <laughs> oh, good. in three weeks because <laughs> we need to laugh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine. Yep. It's healing yep. to us. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, man, with all the challenges uh, that are here, and God also told us there's always going to be trials and tribulation, we've got to have that joy. We've got to have that laughter. I love that. God is funny, I think. Oh, yeah. I think he's a riot. Yeah. I, he invented laughter. Yes, he did. Oh, he did. And I, all I the weird creatures under the ocean. If you've seen those. Yes. There's 6,000 different humor. kind of beetles. I know, and they're like hilarious. He's, I think he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be funny. It is. We're going to find out, but I mean. I'm like, what were you thinking with that one? Like, there's a, like a light hanging off and floating around and eyes that are like, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just, it was the right thing to do at the time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Well, so yeah, I love that laughter. I mean, and you know, I think there's, there, people are craving truth. Yeah. People are craving authenticity, true stories, yeah. you know, which of course are the best kind. But I mean, I think there's such power in that that you can bring. And, and you know, and I, there's of course the whole school thought of just throw the whole media out and you know, California should just fall into the ocean and forget <laughs> the whole thing, like Hollywood, death and destruction. But we have a choice. Either we're going to think that way or we're going to light a candle, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just doing something, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. We're here and we have not been told to, to escape to California yet. <laughs> and so while we're here, we're going to share the good news and we're going to be strategic about it in a creative, fun way yeah. that's going to touch their heart and move them and at least let them feel like I have a decision to make. Right. You know, yes. so while we're in California, we're going to do that. I love that. Yeah. The, the uh, I mean, and I love what Kirk K 
Cameron's doing. I love what the O'Quinn's and Damascus Road Productions, which I know you guys are involved with. And, and then, you know, this Jim Caviezel, the, uh, this year was, you know, rocked by this Sound of Freedom movie yes. that I think was, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know if it was low budget, but it was, you know, they weren't expecting this. No. And it tells, yeah. to me, again, it tells me that people are looking for truth. Yeah. It and, does. And people are looking for truth, and they're looking for where the light is in the darkness. Yes, and I yes. think Sound of Freedom is uh, such a powerful film, and it's, but it's not just focusing in on the darkness of right. the problem. It gave everyone a glimmer of hope yes. to see that there are those that are bringing the light into the darkness, that are challenging what is there. And I think we need to show these stories where there are heroes for us. You know, there are people to emulate. There are people that are showing us the way to take action yes. and make a difference in our world. Yes. And that's why I think that that story was, is so powerful Absolutely. and so effective. The darknesses can be overwhelming in, in, the, in the world today. It's overwhelming. And so the idea that we win, the idea that the light wins yes. is unbelievable. It's a story that's too good to be true, yeah. but it's true. Yes. yes. And so that's, and that's what is amazing. Um, Absolutely. You know, just on planet Earth right now can be so tough. Yeah. But, it's, but bringing those, that glimmer of hope, I think, is, is an awesome opportunity. Yeah. So I want to talk about this movie, uh, Bringing Back Christmas. Uh, BringingBackChristmasMovie.com is the website. It's a, it's a holiday story of faith, perseverance, and angelic intervention. It's, it's they, some people are comparing it to, like, It's a Wonderful Life, one of the greatest movies ever. Uh, it's an inspirational comedy, BringingBackChristmasMovie.com, and it'll be released in some theaters and then on several other platforms. Why do you love this movie? Well, first of all, we had a blast <laughs> writing it. We had so much fun writing it, but its origin is a live presentation. It was a one-act play that toured throughout Southern California. People responded so well. I mean, people were laughing, but they, they, the impact of the nativity scene kind of pierced them in a way that maybe it hadn't before. Wow. And so we had so much fun. And we, this is one of the, the, our writing projects together. When it came to screenwriting, this was one of our first ones together. Okay. And so uh, it was just great for Ariel and I both to do this together. And, yeah, how fun. And not one of us be in our cave working. You right, know. right, right, right. <laughs> you use cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually okay. I say laboratory. He says laboratory and I go cave. Yeah. And so I'm like, you use my word. I know. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, this was so much fun to write. Um, in particular, just to sit and, and write through the scenes. Um, from some of my favorite characters in there, which are the parents of Mary and Joseph, um, were just, that was a blast. And I, I love listening to the audience um, enjoy these characters. Yeah. We, uh, we really took this moment and said, you know, Joseph and Mary, there's only two possibilities here, okay? Because they got married, right? If you think mm -hmm. about it, Mary, Immaculate Conception, right? Joseph gets a dream, but what about the parents that had arranged this marriage? And so these parents either A, knew about it, and they got it, and they were good, or they were blissfully ignorant. But either way, they still got married, right? right. So with that premise, we um, created quirky parents for <laughs> the two of them. Because what we all have at least one quirky parent. Right. Right now, we may not tell them they're the quirky parent, but we all know who they are. <laughs> and so yes. we um, and this we just we created these wonderful characters. And Ryan O'Quinn, who you mentioned yes. from Damascus Road, is just a phenomenal oh, talent. Okay. So so funny. He nailed it. And um, what, what was his role? He played Mary's father. Okay. And he was a proud father of Mary. So yes. it, it was wow. hilarious. He is, yeah. he's well, he must so have fun. been if she grew up to be the son of God, or the mother of God. <laughs> oh yeah. Had to be proud. Well you you're gonna the <laughs> audience is going to love him in this um, in this role. And so he's uh, so he's a real highlight in, um, in this. So Wow. And so tell us a little about your experience with this whole thing. It's been a lot of fun. We shot at um, Capernaum Studios in North Texas, which mm -hmm. is where The Chosen was filmed their first season. Yeah. 
So we used all the facilities, all the structures that they had for the BC time. And we had so much fun. It was very hot. It was the hottest time of year for North <laughs> Texas. But we had a great time because we were able to add comedy in the midst of kind of a biblical setting where typically yeah. or traditionally it's a very serious feel. Right. But we were able to lighten it up and have fun and yet be inspirational. When we get closer to the, the nativity scene and the, the major decisions that had to be made, it becomes an inspirational film as well. Yeah. Oh, so. Really, it's uh, an opportunity for us to watch a man in modern times who goes through challenges that we all do. Um, not, very, not the specific challenges that he went through, but we all go through uh, times that are more challenging and days, in fact, where we think we got the one-two punch and a kick. Right. And that's the day that you're like, where is the love? You know, this is supposed to be Christmas and this is not, life is not a gift. So he's feeling like life is not a gift and it's not loving him and he's not loving it. And God intervenes with this wonderful angel who has a few other angelic friends. So it's a little bit of a band of angels that help him in his journey going back in time to be able to see Mary and Joseph and what they went through on the way to the famous nativity scene because there were certainly challenges that they experienced, whether it was from the negotiation of the dowry with quirky parents <laughs> to not being able to get a room at the end and actually telling the clerk that this baby is mine, but yet not mine. So how did he deal with that? Right. And so we get a chance to see the very real experience of them, but also see it in a context that allows to see for the humor. Uh, yeah. Right. in the circumstances. Who else is in it? Oh and my Dean gosh. Dean Cain. Dean Cain. Superman Lee, in the 90s. The great yes, yeah. the great Dean Cain. Lee Allen Baker, who is known from Will and Grace and Good Luck Charlie and just uh, Into the Spotlight just mm -hmm. came out this year. So many different things. She's a phenomenal talent and yes. plays our our Cal, and then Mark Christopher Lawrence oh, is our lead, and one. Mark oh, is just uh, wonderful in yeah. this. I mean, I can honestly say I've seen him in so many things, but this is my favorite. Yeah. Um, he is both funny and he touching. I mean, literally, he's going to make you laugh, and he's going to make you hold back your tears at a moment. I so. love him. What is it? What does he play? What? He's, he's our Daniel lead. Reese, he is lead, Daniel, the one who. He, oh, the uh, guy. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy, and Cal. Our uh, lead angel is Lee Allen Baker. Okay. And then we also have a wonderful new talent. We have Gabe C. Brown, who goes by Black Griffin. He is a YouTube sensation, just an incredible, incredible singer in his own right. And then he also can do any voice. I mean, he has an ear where he can hear a voice and he can imitate it. Yeah. He does a better Michael Jackson than Michael Jackson. Yeah. So yeah. he's amazing. Yeah, and he's very yeah. showcased in this film. He sings yeah. a little bit. He performs a little bit of comedy. He's got an inspirational scene as one of the angels that visits Joseph in his dream to tell him, you need to take Mary as your wife. Wow. And yeah, so uh, it's just a great, great cast. And we haven't even mentioned Gray Acuna. He's the guy who plays Joseph, does a great job, a good leading man oh, type he's actor. wonderful. You know. And Isabel Almoyen, who had several films out this year, she's a wonderful up-and-coming actress. The two of them have been said by Lee Allen Baker that they're going to be heartthrobs after this film because they're just so precious and endearing. And we were so thrilled to be able to show a different side to Mary and Joseph. And really for me, Joseph has always been like a paper cutout. You know, he's like this background guy. Um, he just doesn't have a real role in the whole nativity. But it's such an important, honorable, amazing thing that he was chosen right. to stand in as the earthly father for our Lord and Savior. Right. And so in this, we get to meet him in a different way. And we also get the opportunity to see Mary and Joseph as two people who really loved each other. And if they were engaged, it wasn't this, you know, Robot. robotic thing yeah. it was they loved each other and so we get to see that romance and the love that they had for each other and I think people are going to enjoy that little bit of hallmarky feel oh I love it yeah I that's, a, that's such a good point you know sometimes I think we lose the reality that these are real people you know we always think about the Noah story and we go we envision the ark and all the animals on it, and then it took, but 
we don't pay attention to the fact that it took 99 years or whatever to build. Oh, like, yes. I, uh, <laughs> so sometimes like our impatience with yes. to realize these are real people and real yeah. challenges and real. And what a great way to like personalize it, because it kind of helps you put yourself in that. Yes. If you're waiting for something, well, so was Noah. You know, that's so right. you know th that I think that's a great way to connect to the. So what's next? I mean, are you got I mean, uh, well, I want to go back. I'm not done talking about the movie, but w what's the next project? All right. Well, we've been writing. The writing has not stopped. So we've written a few other scripts that are going to be circulating in the new year. Nice. We're very excited about that. They are both drama and comedy. One deals with spiritual warfare. Ooh. Another one d deals with uh, kind of quirkiness in a church that we can laugh at. We're not making fun of it. We're laughing at ourselves, right. you know. Yes. And so uh, that'll be circulating in the new year. And then we're helping a, good, a dear friend and co-producer uh, produce an amazing script of his that's um, a sports drama Ooh. as well in the new year. Yeah. So, so we yeah. do, yeah, so we have a slate of three films yeah. that we're Love looking it. to start filming yeah. in the new year. All Christ-centered as well. Yeah, so. and what a great... Uh, the O'Quinns are amazing to me, uh, Ryan and Heather O'Quinn, the, the uh, Damascus Road Productions. I mean, I don't know how they keep up with all this sometimes, <laughs> like all the different things. Oh, it's that, crazy. It's you know, amazing. you're just yeah. throwing the balls up and juggling them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they are professional jugglers, I'm yeah. telling you. They can yeah. do a lot in, yeah. in one shot. And, it, and yeah. it's just great, uh, this kind of this little family of people that it seems like has emerged with all of you that, you know, can do a lot more together than probably you could if you were all in your different silos, Amen. in yes. a sense. Yes. Well, we're very blessed to have Lisa Arnold as our director for this. Mm -hmm. And Lisa has done so many amazing project uh, projects, um, Beautifully Broken, back to, um, all the way back to God's Not Dead, you know, mm -hmm. being a part of that. Um, she was into the spotlight, um, One Nation. I mean, just has a, a laundry list of, of amazing, amazing God projects that she's done and has been honored for it. And so it was such a gift to have her as a director when we interviewed. Uh, she just got it. She just embraced this story, saw it the way we did in the world and made it come to life. And she has uh, always said, you know, it takes a village. And so kind of adopted her her speaking in that, that what we're yeah. really developing is a village right. of, of um, believers and filmmakers that can really support one another yes. uh, in what they're doing. I think the church in general can take a lesson of some other groups and cultures and right. religions even at doing a better job of really supporting one another, right. of really coming together, undergirding um, each other, and focusing on the unity and agreement and power yes. that's in it to get something done for the kingdom. And so that's that's really our goal. That's beautiful when that happens. Absolutely. Yeah, and that unfortunately is probably more rare than we would like to admit, where you know a body of people come together with different gifts all to accomplish something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I hope that's our legacy as a generation. Like our yeah. generation, I hope that when we're done, what we've passed on is you can break out of your little world and build something better, stronger for Christ, uh, jo you know, joining other members on the other side of the body of Christ. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that is a powerful thing. I mean, obviously we're made for community, but yes. what you can do yeah. in community, Absolutely. what you, you can advance, you know, whether it's in your industry or uh, the last guest I had on here, we were talking about housing and what, what's possible mm -hmm. w within a community of people that have different giftings and different callings and skill sets and you know is incredible I yes. mean so that's yeah. yeah I think we really just need to come to that place where we celebrate that and we see it as a gift you know um, yes. to us we've always said that the way that God has confirmed what he's doing through us is bringing the people to make it happen that's right we can have all the great ideas in the world that's right but if we don't have the Lisa Arnolds and we don't have the right. Ryan O'Quinn's and we don't have the Gray Acuna's you know, and the sound people yeah. all the way down yeah. the line. Um, each one of these individuals is so important that right. um, to make it happen. Yeah. We had so many incredible um, extras that came in to make these scenes happen, 
And it was really, really important to us that they were treated with the same love and respect everyone is on a set that the stars are, you know, yeah. because we can't do it without any of them. And yeah. God doesn't value them any less. Right. And so we mm. need to treat one another that way. And if, if we can come together and, and operate in that way, yes. we can accomplish so much more and at such a higher level of excellence, I believe. I think that's right. Yeah, the hand is not competing with my left foot. That's right. You know? Yeah. And you don't really think you need your pinky toe until you stub it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that then, is wow. so true. You know what I mean? That, that'll preach. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's true. And, but, the, but we don't need competition. We need community love yeah. and let's go. You know? Yeah. I yes. mean, the guy that was here earlier, I mean, he's, he's a math guy. Mm -hmm. He's a pro forma guy. He's a, I'm not. And I was listening to him. I'm celebrating inside, like that this guy has these gifts. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need people like you. Oh, you know, if it was just me, nothing would happen. It's the same thing. Exactly. Like it's it's you need, and God brings the people for the project or whatever you want to call it, vision. I totally agree with that because I mentioned, I said that in a meeting a few weeks ago. Like, how do you know this is from the Lord? And oftentimes it's by somebody popping up, going, I want to do this or this or that, and you're like, ah. I was just thinking about that. That's, exactly. You know, I just I needed that. I needed you that. Just came in with right. It, you You're know? from God. You, yes. You're hired. You know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a powerful thing. Well, I um, Christmas. Let's just reflect on Christmas for a second, since it's such a wonderful topic. This Emmanuel, this God with us, uh, is a life changing thing. If there's something to celebrate. You know, obviously Easter's up there, you know, the, the resurrection. But I mean, this per, this is an actual person that came, God came as a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful, you, uh, you probably, have you ever preached on Christmas Eve or they have you up there? Like, yeah. do you ever, what, 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 what was your message when you were thinking about Christmas? Well, I always just think about the preciousness of, I, I know this is cliche, but the preciousness of this, child that we're supposed to be in, we have reverence for that God would start there right. that God would start with a baby you know this pure gift from heaven through a, a faithful peasant girl mm -hmm. and that that's where we're starting yeah and I think so many times the body of Christ feels like no we need to be up here right. working at this level yes no, no, no God takes the foolish things of the world and confounds the wise yeah. and he starts with the humble and then he moves through that, you know, and all throughout the Bible, that's just the way it is. He moved through David, he moved through Moses, he moved through Paul, these people that weren't qualified for what they were supposed to do. Yes. And, and yet that's how God goes. He goes, he chooses that route. He didn't, he didn't want first class. He doesn't, right. if he was buying a ticket for a plane, it wouldn't be first class. Isn't you know? that true? He, yeah, he, came, he humbled himself. Yeah. I mean, in the form of a baby, I think about all the time, what was Jesus like as a teenager? You know, what was he uh -huh. like as a, and, because uh, we don't hear a lot about him in those years, but it, but he grew in wisdom. And the idea of starting small with anything, Yes. we all want to start big, but <coughs> don't despise humble beginnings. Yeah. And then here's the son of God, is this little eight pound, four ounce yeah. little guy. You know, it's an amazing thing. Didn't even have a bed. It was a, it was a hay yeah. trough. You know? Right, mm -hmm. and that's where God wanted to start. He didn't want to start in the palace and the top, you know, whatever suite or whatever. Yes. He, he wanted to start here, and uh, we can all relate to that. Doesn't matter what culture you're from, we can all relate to just the uh, everything's against you, and yet that's where God is. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. Yeah. And I've always thought that Emmanuel is one of the names of God that I love the most. Mm -hmm. It's not just a beautiful name, but the fact that it means God with us. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the idea that he came to be physically with us and that we could watch him grow. And the, the Bible tells us how he grew in wisdom and stature mm -hmm. over the years. And the idea that we can be encouraged by the fact that even Jesus, born as a child, had to grow in his wisdom and in his stature and his understanding of the Father's will and how to walk it out. And that's our earthly experience. Yes. And so we're able to see this beautiful example of God 
in the flesh with us that we can relate to. Yeah. And, and that to me is something that I think is so, um, so meaningful, just so meaningful for me. I, and I love, I love that the, the Holy Spirit was left with us yeah. when he went to the Father. He was, the Holy Spirit was left with us so that we truly are never alone. Yes. He Amen. says he will not leave us or forsake us. Yeah. And so it's just a, such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful meaning. Yeah. Oh, so good. So I would encourage you to check out Bringing Back Christmas. We're trying to bring it back here today. Bringingbackchristmasmovie.com is where you can go. Opens in select theaters and global streaming on Apple TV, Amazon, and others. Uh, but we encourage you to check it out. This sounds like it's going to be great. And if you're not in the Christmas spirit, hopefully you are now, even just looking at our outfits. <laughs> maybe that helps. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Here. It's Love wonderful it. to be yeah. here. Yeah, we've had a great time. Yeah, wonderful. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.